Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. Sounding the alarm on ADSB tracked fee billing. Senator Moran joins in co-sponsoring Aviation Mental Health Act. Belgium chooses Pilatus PC-7 MKX for flight training. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly program dedicated to future aviators and aviation professionals. Airborne Flight Training is brought to you in part by King Schools. King Schools has been leading the effort in producing expert aviation training programs and computer-based learning software for over 50 years. Find out why pilots love King teaching at kingschools.com. Now let's get into today's stories. Sounding the alarm on ADSB tracked fee billing. The danger to the flight training industry and our future pilots is clear. Donald Frano, a member of the Central Florida Pilots Association, posted a statement as an urgent warning about the increasing number of airports using or considering using a third-party vendor to send landing fees to pilots based on ADSB data. This began in Florida and is a growing threat that the aviation community needs to stand up and strongly oppose. He rightly points out that the practice is a violation of the intent of ADSB technology, which was sold on the premise that it was supposed to be for safety only. Breno said the situation is at a crossroads in GA, and Florida is ground zero. Indeed, Kissimmee Gateway Airport was the first airport in the country to implement fee billing based on ADSB data. Airports around the country have been adopting the practice as a way to raise revenue, and there is discussion surrounding whether it violates FAA grant assurances. Breno said they hope to gain some traction in Washington, D.C. for the Pilot and Aircraft Privacy Act, but that has not yet made it to committee. He pointed out there is a bill coming up in the Florida legislature that would prohibit the practice in the state for all aircraft less than 12,500 pounds flying under Part 91. And Frano was urging pilots to contact their representatives to get this legislation passed. After the break, IAE enters MOU to acquire 10 Diamond Trainers. Martha, you know, it has really been getting dark early lately. What are we supposed to do with our evenings now that it's getting dark by 4 p.m.? How about we work on a ground school course? Well, a really good idea would be for us to review our night flying course. And folks, it's a great idea for you too, especially since now we are offering 20% off all King Schools courses. Just use the code word PECAN to get 20% off through December 4th. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. IAE enters MOU to acquire 10 Diamond Trainers. Intercontinental Aviation Enterprise and Diamond Aircraft GmbH announced at the Dubai Air Show 2025 the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding for the acquisition of 10 new Diamond Training Aircraft. IAE is strengthening its expansion of pilot training capacity across the UAE, Greece, Cyprus, and Portugal. IAE intends to purchase eight Diamond DA-40NG and two DA-42-6 aircraft. The aircraft will be configured for both A6 and EASA registrations, which will support IAE's multi-country training operations and ensure standardized fleet operations across all its bases. Army Aviation Explores and Expands Drone Applications The Army's 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade is running with the service's push to boost drone integration by pairing Apaches, Blackhawks, and Chinooks with small unmanned aircraft to handle recon, route surveillance, and other jobs that used to rely on pilots squinting out the window. One of the bigger shifts is happening in the field workshops. Soldiers at Hunter Army Airfield recently trained on the Expeditionary Manufacturing Cell, a deployable 3D printing system that lets crews produce drone parts on demand. FedEx pilots warn of peak season strain on ops. FedEx pilots are indicating potentially serious operational concerns that could negatively impact demands on service during the peak season. The company has been carrying out aggressive cost optimization and restructuring across its network, and those decisions are being felt across its air operations system. In addition to those challenges, the company now has to deal with the grounding of all MD-11 aircraft in the wake of the accident involving UPS Flight 2976. Taken together, these factors are putting significant pressure on pilot schedules, as well as FedEx's peak season capacity. Diamond delivers DA-62 MPP to Dresden Tech University. Diamond Aircraft announced that the Technical University of Dresden has taken delivery of a state-of-the-art research aircraft, the DA-62 MPP, or Multi-Purpose Platform. 
The twin engine aircraft will be utilized as a flying laboratory to conduct research in hydrogen-based propulsion systems. The Institute of Lightweight Engineering and Polymer Technology and the Institute of Aerospace Engineering at TU Dresden will be conducting the research. A central goal of the institutes is to replace one of the conventional engines with a hydrogen propulsion system developed through the in-house research program. That's it for today's Trip Around the Patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Senator Moran joins in co-sponsoring Aviation Mental Health Act. Republican Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas, chair of the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Aviation Space and Innovation, has thrown his full support behind the Bipartisan Mental Health and Aviation Act by joining as a co-sponsor of the bipartisan legislation. The bill intends to destigmatize mental health issues in aviation, train aviation medical examiners, and make it overall easier for aviation professionals to seek and receive mental health treatment without fearing the loss of their careers. The Subcommittee on Aviation, Space, and Innovation must first pass the bill before sending it to the full Senate Commerce Committee. Senator Moran said, quote, Pilots and air traffic controllers bear a major responsibility in ensuring the safety of the flying public, a task that can be extremely stressful. No one should have to deal with mental health challenges alone or worry that seeking help could harm their career, end quote. The MHAA has garnered strong bipartisan co-sponsor support from Senators Moran, John Hoven, Tammy Duckworth, Katie Britt, Dick Dubin, Deb Fisher, John Hickenlooper, Lisa Murkowski, Amy Klobuchar, John Curtis, and Jack Reed. The Senate is now considering its version of the bill, which follows the House version, which was passed by a voice vote on September 8, 2025. After these messages, Belgium chooses Pilatus PC-7 MKX for flight training. For over 30 years, the massive sport plane resource guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital sport plane resource guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Direct Fly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single engine, two seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all metal aircraft design provides low maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Belgium chooses Pilatus PC-7 MKX for flight training. The federal government of Belgium approved the purchase of 18 Pilatus PC-7 MKX aircraft, along with a comprehensive 20-year service contract to provide training services based on the PC-7 MKX that includes an integrated ground-based training system. Pilatus will begin deliveries of the PC-7 MKX in 2027 to replace Belgium's existing training aircraft. In addition to the aircraft, the comprehensive training system includes state-of-the-art simulators, computer-based training platforms, and mission planning and debriefing systems to ensure a complete yet seamless continuity of training from the classroom to the cockpit. Concurrent with the integrated training system, Pilatus will work with its Belgian partner Sabina Engineering and AG Real Estate to build new and upgraded infrastructure at the Bevacom Beauchene Air Force Base. The project will ensure operational support for the next 20 years, and Belgian industry will be critical in construction and ongoing maintenance of the facilities, as well as for the aircraft. Training is slated to begin in 2028 following delivery of the sims and familiarization of instructors with the new training system. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.